So hey guys, welcome to video, I think it's number five in my bike collection video. This is a video about my Surly Krampus Ops 29 Plus. Uh, so what's the backstory on this bike? So it, it relates to my Salsa Fargo because when I was looking at, when I bought the Salsa Fargo, what I was initially actually looking for was a fully rigid 29 inch uh, mountain bike. And I bought the Fargo and I kind of lost my way with that. And so what I was basically using as my actual off-road mountain bike is my Surly Moonlander fat bike, which is uh, enjoyable in specific conditions in the summertime. So I wanted to get something that was faster uh, than my fat bike. So then Surly had introduced this, the 29 plus concept and uh, it fascinated me and I was read up on it and uh, decided to bite the bullet. Um, this is actually kind of the second gen of the uh, Krampus. The first gen version used horizontal dropouts, which I'm not a big fan of. I hate them on my, my Surly. I have no interest in riding single speed. I won't be using an internal hub. Uh, so that was one thing that kind of kept me away from that, that initial Krampus uh, release. But the second gen, they went with what they call a MDS chip system. So this has a standard vertical uh, slot for your wheel and standard quick release, and then you can actually buy replacements. So you can buy a horizontal chip and you can buy uh, a through axle chip. So uh, that solved that issue for me. Um, and so what is 29 plus? 29 plus is basically to get you a bike in between a fat bike and in between a regular mountain bike. So it gives you a little bit of the benefits of a fat bike and benefits of a traditional 29er. So what makes a 29 plus? Basically a wide rim with a three inch tire. So this uses the Surly rabbit holes. It's a 50 millimeter wide rim uh, and then a three inch tire. So it's not considered a fat bike. Uh, but it does give you some of the benefits of a fat bike. So in off-road scenarios, you run low pressure. So like 13, 14, 15 PSI, uh, much lower, and that's with a tube, much lower than you would run uh, a traditional mountain bike. Uh, so you get uh, somewhat cushioning suspension effect from running the low pressure. Um, and then with the three inch tire, basically you have an extremely large contact patch. So you have huge cornering grip, you have huge climbing grip, you have huge braking grip. Uh, and then the other benefit of it is the outer diameter is actually larger than a fat bike. So it's larger than a five inch. So if you're gonna go the route of uh, a fully rigid mountain bike, basically you're gonna want the bike that gives you the, the best rollover performance. So the best approach angle for obstacles, etc. So that's why I went this route. Um, I'm, I'm kind of on an anti-suspension kick. I don't want a complicated fork that's going to need maintenance, that's, that's going to need potentially expensive maintenance. So that's why I went this route. So, and after using it for a little while, I had initially purchased it with the idea of using it at a trail system here that we have called Shunya Mines that is a very rooty trail system. And as the trail system ages, it just gets more and more rooty. Not that new roots are exposed, it's just the old roots that are there. Uh, the dirt that is protecting them basically gets worn away and more and more of the root gets exposed. So I've been riding there since the trail system was opened, which is the early 90s, and it's way rougher than it used to be. So most of the guys there that rate, it's actually used for our cross-country racing here, the local city, most of the guys are running full suspension bikes to go through there. and. Uh, after taking this bike there, um, it's definitely not necessarily ideally suited for high speed running through routes. Uh, it doesn't necessarily like tight technical trails um, because it does. It has a long wheelbase. It is a little bit cumbersome for for doing tight turns, etc. So it didn't actually work out perfectly for what I had uh, originally thought I was going to use it for. Um, but then there is attached to that trail system is another trail system called Centennial Park, which is basically double track, cross country ski. It's, uh, there's lots of rock uh, kind of thing and it's high speed trails. Uh, it, this bike is great in there. It's very enjoyable for that. So I'll use this in Centennial Park. If I'm gonna go into 
Cascades, or sorry, not Cascades, but uh, Shunya Mines, I would much rather ride my, my fat bike there. Uh, the other thing that I didn't realize, that I now realize when I started riding this, uh, this is a very enjoyable gravel road bike. Um, it's not particularly fast. Like if I was going to go on a ride with people that are riding, um, you know, like a cyclocross bike or one of the new modern gravel grinder bikes that you're, you're seeing now, you would have a very difficult time keeping up um, because the, the wheels and tires are heavy. There's a lot of rolling resistance in comparison to uh, those types of bikes. Um, not to boast, but I would say I am in a above average physical condition in terms of cycling specific condition. Uh, I have done some rides with my brother on this bike and he's riding uh, a South, he has a Celsa Fargo as well. Um, and even then, I my brother is just generally in good all around physical condition. I have very specific cycling specific fitness. Um, you know, on the flats, I was fine, but I actually had trouble keeping up to him on the hills because of the extra weight of, uh, of these wheels when you get to some, some tougher climbs. Uh, but it's really enjoyable on gravel roads, number one, because it rides super smooth. That huge rollover diameter uh, is really, really smooth riding when it comes to riding over, uh, you know, cracks, potholes, stutter bumps, um, huge, huge grip. So, like I said in the previous video, we do have some really fast, high-speed um, gravel downhills here. And there's one particular one um, that's really, really fast, and it's got kind of a cur curve in it. And uh, I've, the fastest I've ever gone through that section is on this bike. I've actually gone faster through this. I think I've hit 72 kilometers an hour going down it. Uh, whereas on my Fargo, I think I've hit 68 kilometers an hour to it. Um, because this is, it's a momentum machine. Once uh, it builds momentum, especially downhill, it just goes and goes and goes. So yeah, in an off-road situation, the same thing I would say, that it's a momentum machine. It works best on, on rolling terrain. So terrain where there's a downhill, you gain a bunch of speed, and then you don't have this massive climb after that you're going to have to pedal up. Uh, something that's going to take, you know, 5, 10 seconds of pedaling to get over. This bike maintains the speed really well. When you get into a situation like uh, at Shunya Mines, there's lots of tight corners and all of a sudden you have these, they're, they're shorter, but they're really, really steep, steep climbs. Uh, that's when you notice the sluggishness and extra weight of, uh, of these wheels and tires. So really it's a momentum machine. It works best on, on rolling terrain. Uh, the bike initially came, it was a one by. So I'm still running the, uh, the original chain ring. So it's a 33 tooth on it and it had, came with an 1136 cassette and I found 33 uh, with a 36. You know, this isn't a light bike at all. That's actually not that much lighter than my uh, Moonlander. I think this is, comes in around stock around 32, 33 pounds. Um, it's not a light bike. And it, it's mainly due to these tires. This, the stock tires that it comes with are the 27 TPI. Um, these are like 1,200 grams, over 1,200 grams each. If you buy the 120 TPI version with the Kevlar bead, they, I think they're under 900 grams. So there's a massive difference in weight between those tires. So I am going to upgrade to those lighter tires. Unfortunately, there's still tons of life left in these things. Uh, because I guess it's such a large diameter, they roll slowly, it takes a long time to wear. I have over 3,200 kilometers on this bike and those tires are gonna last uh, a very long time. Yeah, so I found that the one by just isn't appropriate and adequate on a heavy bike. Uh, when we, we have a hilly trail system, it's a hilly area. Uh, so what I tried to do was live with the one by by getting the, this new Praxis cassette. So this is a 10 speed 11 to a 40, so it has a 40 tooth. And even so, on the days that I felt strong, yeah, I could manage it. But then, you know, if I chose to ride it the day after I had done a harder workout, um, you know, I was suff suffering on the climbs. So I have now changed it to a uh, 2x10. So it's a 33 tooth, and then the inner ring is a 26. Uh, I didn't go with really high-end stuff. I just went with SLX uh, derailleur, SLX 2x uh, front shifter. And yeah, it's made the bike way more practical, way more usable. Uh, what I like about it is the small difference from the 33 to the 26. Uh, when I approach a hill, if I'm in the big ring, 
and it starts getting hard and then when I drop it down that size difference is almost perfect it's almost like it's already in the perfect gear I don't feel like I have to drop down a couple in the back so 26 uh, to 40 I should be able to climb most everything here comfortably on the days that I'm not not feeling fantastic like what else have I done to this bike yeah initially I made a few quick changes to it uh, I've got a much nicer lighter seat post here with the Thompson Elite it just comes with a generic uh, uh, basic seat post and then it came with aluminum bars and uh, I got these pizzazz I don't know there's some weird carbon uh, handlebar uh, they were it's all my dealer had at the time in stock. I didn't want to wait to order bars, but we did weigh them and uh, they are quite a bit lighter than the stock handlebars. And then I went with this, these ESI foam grips, uh, neoprene grips, and they're, they're really, really lightweight. Oh, that headset's feeling really, 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 really rough. I have to get that checked out. And then the seat that it came with, I didn't like the seat. And this was the uh, stock seat that came with my Yeti Cyclocross, which I didn't use. Uh, because I had switched to uh, a Celitalia, so I've had this laying around for years and it was substantially lighter than the stock seat post that came on uh, on the bike, so or seat that came on the bike, so I put that on and even those changes uh, ended up dropping the weight of the bike by a couple pounds almost, but it's not a bike that I'm going to dump tons of money into because, you know, you could spend to $2,500, almost the price of this bike, and you, you probably still have trouble getting it to 25 pounds. Um, so I will say that I definitely love 29 plus. Uh, I will definitely in the future probably purchase another one. Um, but now with the introduction of 27.5 plus, uh, so 650B 27.5 with wide rims and three inch tires. I think that joint, that size is going to basically take over from 29 plus just because it is more versatile. You can build more bikes around it. You can build full suspension bikes around it, hardtails. There are some companies now putting out full suspension 29 plus, but uh, it's really hard to make a small bike uh, around them. If they already have problems making small bikes for smaller riders for just regular 29er. It's going to be even more difficult to do with uh, 29 plus. So yeah, uh, 29 plus, if you're looking to go with a fully rigid bike, you want to avoid suspension, you live someplace with rolling terrain, uh, that's not super rough, super technical, uh, you can have a blast with a 29 plus bike. It is, it is super fun. So you can now also get suspension forks that are 29 plus compatible. Uh, I think RockShock has one. I believe Manitou has one now. You can also run the Lauf. Uh, fat bike fork on on this it'll be compatible with 29 plus and I'm kind of thinking oh I'd like to get a low fork uh, for this but uh, again the low forks are extremely expensive um, I think they're like 1100 US and uh, I live in Canada and with the current exchange rate uh, that's gonna be an extremely expensive fork come to at least a half just the half the price of this bike alone um, but it is kind of in the back of my mind it would make the bike more usable at, at Shuny Mines. So yeah, so what is there to say about 20, 29 plus? So if you're looking for a fully rigid bike, uh, if you want a simple bike and you still want to ride reasonably rooty rocky terrain, uh, this bike will, will work for that. Um, that huge rollover, rollover diameter does, does help. You can run pretty low pressure, especially if you run them tubeless. Uh, so you do get that cushioning, that shock absorption. Uh, but I do think it is better suited to uh, slightly less technical terrain. It's suited to rolling terrain with rollers, uh, sweeping corners, that sort of thing. That's, that's where it excels. Um, it does make an enjoyable gravel road bike if you accept the fact that you're going to be slower than uh, you would on other bikes. But I found it doesn't make it less enjoyable to ride if you're riding by myself. I totally enjoy it. There is another guy here in town that has a Krampus and uh, we did a ride on Sunday and it was uh, an enjoyable ride. Um, it was a mix of old railway line and we ended up doing some riding on pavement uh, on the way home. And we actually did like a 30 minute session of like team, team time trialing. So over that 30 minutes, I think we averaged over uh, 31K an hour. So once, like I said, these are momentum machines and it was over uh, a real rolling road. So once you get this thing humming uh, and it's flat or slightly downhill, it picks up speed pretty good and, and maintains it quite well. Um, so yeah, that is my video, bike collection video for bike number five. 
Surly Krampus Ops 29 Plus. I love it.